daily life. Lloyd, is it characteristic of perhaps liberal Christianity that it talks of engagement with the world, perhaps much more firmly than Buddhism talks about engagement with the world? <clears throat> well, I think you put your finger on one of the differences that I see between Buddhism and Christianity generally, I'm not talking about traditional Christianity, but Christianity generally, and that is that, and it, is, and it comes, comes out in the Buddha and Jesus. Um, I, I, I've sometimes wondered if the Buddha was an introvert, <laughs> and that Jesus was an extrovert. <laughs> And that, and that Jesus, therefore, was always looking outward to what happened amongst his fellows. Whereas I felt the Buddha was looking inward because of the, because of the experience of, of ill, of, of evil, of, of suffering, and trying to find a way in which he could be delivered from suffering and consequently having found the way, uh, uh, lead, it, lead it to others. Th that I see as a, one is a bit more p positive towards the world and, and the other a bit more negative towards the world. Do you have a response to that, Stephen? Well, I think that is certainly correct when one considers mainstream Buddhism as we now know it. Um, there have been, of course, movements within the Buddhist tradition itself, particularly in Mahayana Buddhism, where there is this emphasis on compassion, but it often remains rather idealistic. But I feel recently in the studies I've been doing of trying to reconstruct the Buddha's life from the Enlightenment until his death, which is his 45-year teaching career, one does not have the impression of someone who was more inward than outward looking. You see, in fact, a man who was constantly engaged with the the political, social, religious issues of his day. He was traveling, walking right across the Gangetic Basin. He was um, very critical of the social structure of his time. He wished to abandon the caste system. He wished to empower people to create their own identities in the world. I feel that what has happened in Buddhism is, in a sense, it. It, 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 it has reverted back to the Indian matrix of the renunciant and the aim to somehow transcend this world and achieve some kind of liberation, moksha, nirvana, um, uh, in a kind of transcendent space. Uh, just to underline what Stephen was saying, I was interested to learn in my reading that the Chinese Buddhists were setting up orphanages before Christians were doing it in the West. Yeah, it's true with under Emperor Ashoka in India in the third century BC, he was creating all kinds of social services and so forth. Yeah. This would be, um, uh, uh, this would line up with a comment that I recollect you saying somewhere to the effect that Buddhism has managed to adapt in whatever age it finds itself. Yeah. Uh, and, and perhaps unlike Christianity, which seemed to be setting the tone for the ages, is the other way around. Buddhism adapted to whatever age it found itself in. Would that be right? I think that's true. I mean, the history of Buddhism shows that Buddhism has survived not by persisting in a particular, in, with some institutional body like the Vatican or something, mm. but in each country to which it has gone, it has entered into a dialogue, a conversation, and has been transformed in the process. And it has tried to address the needs of the Chinese or the Tibetans or the Japanese or whatever it was of those periods, of those times, and in so doing has transformed the society to some extent mm. and in the same time has, 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 has had to come up with entirely novel forms mm. um, in which it understands itself.